Ooh, that last minute's always the longest. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. Um, welcome everybody to the UX uh, functional update. I haven't done one in a while. Uh, last one fell right on top of GitLab Summit and there just wasn't much time to uh, fit it in. So I'm uh, going to do some updates here, uh, particularly on OKRs um, and on a new format for our FGU moving forward. Uh, and quickly for anyone uh, new to the company, uh, this is the UX team. Uh, you can reach out to any of us uh, on the team if you have questions about uh, issues, curious about how UX works, um, for coffee chat, um, but this is the team. So I'm gonna start with OKRs today. So we have some, some really important uh, OKRs this time around. I'm really excited about them. Um, the first of which is to document GitLab standards and update the style guide. Uh, the current GitLab UX guide is a little bit outdated. Uh, designs change often, making manual updates to this guide has proved to be a pretty time consuming task. Um, the current guide is largely text-based and does not provide detailed visuals of patterns and components for either other UX members or front-enders working on an issue. So the goal here for this OKR is to make sure that we're documenting standards and providing a visual guide uh, for internal as well as external in the community. So doing so helps us increase usability and user adoption. So visual standards and style guidelines provide consistency within an organization and with end users. It speeds up our overall process. So the availability of proven design solutions allows designers and product managers alike to solve problems quickly without reinventing the wheel. Once we have these patterns established, it's perfectly reasonable that a PM or even somebody in the community uh, with an idea could take one of our existing patterns as the solution and start from there and it's a little bit less uh, need to involve UX once those are established. It also provides clear communications across disciplines and time zones. So referencing patterns from our own library allows for quick, clear communication of visual concepts. So a lot less ambiguity and back and forth on issues trying to understand what it is we need. Also retention of organizational knowledge and efficient training of new team members. And in the end, hopefully improved UI polish. Um, using reusable code based on patterns requires less testing time than a product that doesn't leverage patterns. I know Philippa has been working on stuff like that lately with us, <laughs> making some patterns that we use quite a bit. So that's kind of the, the, the main crux of our OKRs right now is to really establish this guide, uh, completely flesh it out and get those visuals. And the rest of the OKRs you'll see are really supporting this overall goal. So our first step in, in building more accessible documentation is through the implementation of a proper design pattern library. So after a lot of trial and error with Sketch, native options, as well as third party plugins, freebies, everything that we, we could think of to try. Um, we did settle on brand AI as the best tool for the job. And just to understand a little bit about why brand AI, brand AI was the best tool um, for designers and for anybody else, context switching is a productivity killer. And what the brand AI plugin allows us to do is view our assets and styles side by side with the design when we're working on them. So there's no switching pages or browsing to a reference site. The plugin pulls from a central sketch file, but designers never have to open that file. They never have to add, remove, or update any design elements. So it allows us to um, work with those elements through the plugin, update simultaneously, automatically. It allows us to always see the most up-to-date version of our design system without having to retrieve a new version. Uh, we have the ability to search the library and multiple designers can make automatic updates to that library. So in short, for us, the pros are consistency across files, a single source of truth, uh, upkeep is automated and that burden is taken off designers, uh, automatic style guide generation, and then it significantly speeds up design time. We've seen quite an increase in our ability to, to kind of get through designs. So that's something we're actively using right now 
And if you look at the meta issue I've linked to, you'll see that there's a whole list of all the patterns that we need to define. And what we're doing there is we're not only getting them inside of brand AI so that we can use them when designing, but we're also documenting in each of those issues, the usage, the do's, the don'ts, um, everything you need to understand how a component should be used, should be rendered, the different active states, everything for that. And that information is gonna actually feed into another one of our OKRs. Did I skip one? Hold on one second. I totally did. There we go. I knew that didn't look right. All right, <laughs> clicked it twice. Um, so this uh, component library, while that's something that uh, design is using to increase our productivity and improve our process, it, it is going to um, cascade down and enable us to launch the first iteration of design.gitlab.com. And what that is, is it's a uh, place for designers to collaborate um, more efficiently with the team and the community. So therefore, our goal here is to replace the existing static UX guide we talked about in the beginning with this living documentation using Storybook. Um, so you can add stories to this uh, Storybook. Each story is, is basically an, an area um, in this. You can see this one is buttons. So the, the story is buttons and each component is a piece of that story. And what that enables people to do is you're working on something, you're not sure which button, what the what it should look like, how it should be used. You can come here and reference it quickly. You don't need to ping the designer. You don't need to wait for anybody. It's already established. It's already there. You can even grab the code snippet. Um, this is still uh, experimental. <laughs> uh, we're putting it together. This is phase one, so we expect there to be quite a bit of, of things that we need to work out. But the goal here is not only to include components, but also to include a um, list of, again, do's and don'ts um, and all the documentation that we need for our UX. And with all of this work that we're doing, as we strengthen and polish the user experience and interface of GitLab, um, it's really important that we share our successes process with team members and the greater community. So sharing case studies and best practices allows team members to understand the work going into the issues that matter most to the company. Hopefully it will also give greater insight into what goes into the UX process and how everyone can contribute. On the flip side, it allows our customers and community to see that improving user experience is a high priority and that we listen closely to their concerns. And finally, sharing our processes as thought leaders in the area of UX will help us to attract talent from around the globe. Now my favorite part, hiring. Abby, you're smiling. We're making so much work for you. <laughs> so GitLab has grown significantly. Um, it's been amazing just in the time I've been here to see um, all the awesome new people we've been bringing on board and, and the gearing up for the roadmap for 2018. And, and I'm really excited. Um, and I'll be more excited when I have enough people to help. <laughs> So we are, um, to keep up, obviously, with this ever-increasing demand for UX research and UX design, we're growing our team. So please help us spread the word. Um, there are links here to the UX designer opening and UX researcher. We're actually hiring two UX designers, uh, intermediate, uh, open, open to, to maybe a little bit lower, a little bit higher. There, there's not a real... Um, not a stickler for the level, it's really more about um, the work and, and the fit. Um, and the researcher position is a junior position. Um, and you can see the awesome stats, and this is from yesterday. I know that there's even more stats now. I saw a bunch of applications came through, um, but PeopleOps has been rocking it, going through uh, 23 applicants for the UX designer and, and 18 for the UX researcher. And I swear it's been under two weeks. I don't, I, I don't even think it's been that long. Um, I personally have four interviews I'll be doing this week. Um, so thank you everyone for, for helping with this. This is very important for our team. So moving on, usually what we do in our, our functional group updates is we kind of 
do the what what's coming up in the next release what are the, the some of the issues we've been working on then we talk about issues that are in progress um, and then we talk about ux ready issues we'd like to have scheduled and we're slowly going to move away from that format um, one because i think that what's coming up in a milestone is is covered quite well in the kickoff um, and i don't want to repeat um, information, especially as other functional groups give their talks. Um, we're all working on a lot of the similar stuff, obviously. So my focus here is going to be really um, today talking about UX ready issues that we'd like to prioritize and then moving forward on process uh, and other things. I'll touch on that at the end. But for right now, I'm going to talk about some UX ready issues. So as a quick overview, there's a total of 183 open issues in CE and EE where the UX work is complete and that don't have any milestone attached to them. So these are things sitting out there that UX has worked on, collaborated with front end, back end, whoever was involved um, and is ready to go, but for one reason or another has not been scheduled. Often they've been scheduled and then pushed back or pulled, pulled aside from, from a milestone. And this is just a quick breakdown by product. Um, these are UX ready issues by area with no milestone attached whatsoever. Um, so when iterating on a feature, we ship the smallest change possible with the intention of improving the UX over the next several releases. Unfortunately, these improvements don't always happen for a variety of reasons, shifting priorities, lack of capacity. Um, these things do happen. And Definitely not every UX ready issue should necessarily be scheduled, um, but moving forward, the UX team will be making it a priority and a point to evaluate and prioritize UX ready issues during release planning. Doing so will help us to make rapid improvements to existing features while closing out of date issues. It's also gonna help us in our effort, efforts to get ahead. Um, UX ideally would like to be a little bit ahead of platform and a little bit ahead of front end um, and presenting UX ready issues to them. So using these UX ready issues will give us a little bit more leeway inside of uh, each release to, to work on other things. Um, again, this is something that we'll be doing, prioritizing, uh, going through and making sure that um, if it's something that's been UX ready for over a year and is out of date, it gets closed out at that point. It's probably not worth doing, um, but there might be some really easy wins that we can get in there um, and make some rapid improvements. And UX bugs, this is another one. Um, so there are currently 56 issues labeled with bug and UX with no assigned milestone. Um, in order to reduce wasted time, UX does not typically work on an unscheduled issue. Uh, doing so creates a backlog of UX ready issues that may or may not ever be implemented, like the exact, exact scenario I was just talking about. Um, so it's one of those things in terms of how we handle bugs, it might be something to look at an opportunity um, to uh, maybe better handle bugs and get them on the schedule and get them out there. Um, there are 10 issues labeled with bug and no assigned milestone that are UX ready. So we do need your help. Uh, <laughs> in order to, for the UX team to prioritize these issues, we have a blocking bug. Uh, it's really annoying. So currently when trying to reorder items on the boards, these items can only be moved up by a maximum amount of the height of the viewport. So for example, if you have 100 items on the backlog and your current browser size is only showing you 10, you can only move the bottom 10 up 10 at a time. So when you're reordering large lists, it makes it really, really difficult. Um, you have to really remember where things were. And what we're actually trying to do is, is prioritize these UX ready issues in a list so that we can start knocking through them, closing them out and getting them scheduled. So if anybody's interested, that, that bug is there. And then as I said, improving the UX FGU. Um, Past UX FGUs have focused mostly on works in progress and I feel have maybe been a little repetitive simply because we're all working on the same things. Um, so future FGUs will focus on sharing UX process, standards, and the evolving vision for design at GitLab. 
we would love your input and ideas for what like you'd like to see and learn in the FGU. If you want to learn more about uh, practices, about techniques, the different ways that we do uh, design and research or how we ideate, um, we'd love to, to show you that. So just let us know. And questions. Okay. Let me go to the chat, see if there's any questions. Um, yes, Cortland. So Cortland says, what about design and the marketing side? Uh, I think that we'd want marketing designers to benefit from these same style standards. Um, and Dimitri says here, there's a separate repository, but I do know also that in the outline for design.gitlab.com, we have a marketing section and we've been working with Luke on that. Um, Luke has been awesome about collaborating with us. He jumps into our meetings, comments on the issue, and he's keeping an eye on the work we're doing. Um, so he's definitely involved in this. And I agree, Cortland, it makes total sense for us to collaborate on this. Um, um, let's see. I know, Philippa, I know. It can't happen fast enough for me, Philippa. <laughs> um, da -da. Let's see. Oh, and I see Tori already answered. Thanks, Tori. I should have known. All right. Uh, da -da -da. So, and Pedro did say design.gitlab will also serve as a playground for FE and UX to improve and try out components. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Are there any other questions? Is there anything else I can answer? Going once, going twice. Last slide. Huge, huge thank you. I've said it once, I'll say it again. People Ops, you rock. Um, we're just all amazed at, at the lightning speed you're, you're going through candidates and, and getting people uh, screened and over to us and scheduled. And Chloe helped me get all kinds of um, really long, tedious interview questions loaded up into templates, which was unbelievably helpful. Um, so thank you for that. And then Winnie and Simon have been uh, invaluable in helping us with design.gitlab.com. Um, without them, we would be nowhere right now. Um, so thank you, thank you for all the work you did at the summit and since then. And with that, I will let you go. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.